Welcome everybody. Today's video finds us over here in Sukhothai and I'm standing in front of one of the most important ruins here in the Sukhothai area. Wat Mahahat is the probably the only one that's more important than this one. This is Wat Pra Pai Luang. Now this actually predates the formation or the Declaration of Independence of Sukhothai. This is back when the Khmer were in charge of this area. Because this was at one time a frontier town of the Khmer. This temple here they believe was built during the Bayan era by King Juryaman VII, which was the Khmer king. And this was uh, built with three prongs that only one of them remain now. And then it has some other uh, cool stuff inside of it. So let's walk through here and let's see what we see today. This is the area. There's a modern temple over that away and then it was surrounded by a series of moats and then this is inside of the wall and there's a mandrabra right here or however you say it, they would have had four images. Would have had a standing, a seated, a reclining, and a walking Buddha. And then we'd have had a prong here, and then we'd have went over there. That is the Khmer Towers. There was three of them at one time, and now there's just one left. There was a ton of buildings here. And they believe at one time this might have been the center of the Sukhothai town itself. The uh, Walled city part is about 800 or so meters away from here, but it would have probably overflowed the area inside of the walls, and this would have been an important part of it. So we see here you have the laterite columns, and this would have had the four images around it. Yeah, so we can see here this would have been the base of an image. And then we have the, the walking or standing image right there. This would have been just absolutely colossal. And that would have been a Buddha right over there as well. And there's only one column left of it. So to me, this looks like the reclining Buddha. It's really hard to see because there's not a whole lot left. But you can make that, most of that Buddha out itself. Ah, oh, this is fantastic. And then there's little images. There's not a whole lot left of them. Let's look over here. So you see the laterite columns, but you see the little images right here, or what's left of them. Oh, there's not much, and there's a piece of one. Oh, that's really cool. And it looks like they put some like pottery shards inside of that plaster to take up space. Yeah, this is the, the walking Buddha. You can see his feet right here. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, there's one almost just like this at Camping pet that has it's a little different shape than this, but it has the four images. Oh, this is really cool. And they would have had images down here also. And then there's another Buddha image. That one might have had his hand out like the dispelling fear. And then you would have went up into this part of the ruin. Let's look at this Buddha right here really quick. And as you come in from the east, there's a little bit of ruin out there. And then you can see the base of this has the laterite stones. Those would have been the original. And then they stuck these brick in it during restoration. It has just one little entrance over here. So they have the laterite. And they actually put kind of some rubble core, like a brick rubble pieces in the middle to take up space. So there would have been a Buddha there and a colossal seated Buddha. And then another one over here. And then it looks like some legs of a standing Buddha here. Ah, oh, this is unbelievable and that little building there is really really cool so from the looks of it this would have been the cloister which would have been the covered walkway here now you see so many buddha images because juryman the seventh was a buddhist he's the one that converted the Khmer from hindu to buddhism he saw after the fall of Angkor, he saw Hindu as flawed, and so he converted to Buddhism. And he's the one that defeated the, the what is it, the Cham, and uh, restored 
Angkor to the Khmer because the city fell under his uh, predecessor. And there's just little Buddha image bits all around in here. Oh, this is really cool. And then you see the styling here. And this building here definitely looks like it would have been like the lotus shaped building. Looks that way to me. And then there would have been some more buildings over here. Most of it's just down to the base. You have some more of the Buddha image parts over here. Just a whole mix of brick, laterite stone. And they plastered all this stuff. And there would have been carvings all around. And then this is the base of the main building here. Yeah, really nice. So right there, they would have had at least a double row of Buddhas in those little notches right there. And that would have been the prong and another little brick building here. There actually would have been three rows. You see these here are in pretty good shape. There's the heads there, and then you can just see the legs of that third row of Buddha images. I'd like to get up there. They have a sign up that says, don't climb, so I'm not gonna climb up there. Yeah, and this is the, another look at that core of that. That chetty would have been fantastic. And another small little satellite chetty out here. And just tons of the bases and everything. It's a shame how weathered it off it is. And then we're going into the next little part here. So we would have had the entrance coming in and you would have went up into this building. It has the laterite stone base, all the bricks. So we'll go up in here and see what this looks like. Yeah, and this would have came, led you into the center of this humongous building. Ah, oh, this is gigantic. And there's the one Khmer prong that's still remaining. Lots of little pedestals. But check out these chetties. This is a cool style. I don't think I've ever seen this style of the chetty around here. I think these are the small little chetties that you'll see like uh, around the walkway at the, like the big tall chetties. And it looks like it's out of laterite stone and they carve the whole design and then they would have plastered over the top of it. And they have those just all around this building. And then we have a little bit of sandstone. What was up in here? Yeah, the stairwell is kind of precarious here. This might have been one little holdout of Shiva here. It kind of looks like the base of one of the Hindu shrines. Yeah, so this must have had Hindu elements in it, in addition to the three prongs. You can see some more of that, like one more of those little chetties there that have just been all around the outer perimeter. And this is a really large site here. You can see more of this over here. Okay, let's go into the main part. This would have been pretty tall. You can see the existing columns all out of the ladder, right? Now, I don't know where they've mined the or quarried the laterite here looks like that would have been the top of the column i know campaign pet they had a quarry right there in the old part of the city and then this would have been a pedestal up here for some images and then we'll take a look at these Khmer style prongs right here there's one and then this would have been another one, and then the third would have been right there. So there would have been three just behind this hall. This would have been like the big wee hand here. So you can see the styling of it, all the imagery up there. And looks like it's open here, and they would have had their image right here in the middle. Some pigeons coming out of there. <laughs> All that is the laterite. You can see the naga, how they have it here. These look like maybe they touched these up. They've restored them a little bit. Yeah, that's in really nice shape up there. You can see the pediment right there. And I don't know if there would have been a lintel right over the door. If it would have had the Hindu imagery, it would have had a lintel right there. 
Now this is just a home for the pigeons. It's kind of smells like the, the bird crap for sure in there. And you can see the faux door here. Yeah, so they would have had a lintel. There's a uncarved lintel right there. And it has the faux door here. This would have had the same. This would have been a faux door. And you can see the base for the, looks like a Shiva image, the Shiva Linga. Yeah, very cool. All right, so here's our best look. This is on the west side here. You can see all the imagery and the uncarved lintel. And you have the, the Buddha right there. It's missing its head. And then this would have been a Naga with the laterite and it would have put the plaster on the outside of it. And then the other faux door. Oh, but that's really, really fantastic right there. This is looking at it from the west. So this would have been the center prong. That would have been the right. And then the one here on the left is the only one still intact. And it has a couple smaller little buildings out here also. And these all have Buddha images. There's that little building and then there's that one right over there also. There's not a whole lot to see of that one. Well, look at this. This looks like a little tiny ordination hall. So I don't know when they started incorporating a Weehan and an Ubisot into the temple buildings here, but you can see clearly that this is the ordination hall with the marker stones, and then it has the Buddha up there. So if somebody knows kind of when they started doing that, uh, please let me know. I, would, I was uh, curious about it. I've tried to research it, and I uh, haven't found any information about it. And this is up here. So this would have been the wall, then it would have had a little walkway, it looks like, outside around it that would have been covered. And then you see the pedestal with the Buddha image right here. Ah, really fantastic. And one more look back over here to that. Oh, it's really nice. And there's just nobody out here. People go to the historical park and they don't journey over here to it. And the admission is 100 baht, but it counts to the north part. So you can go to here and Watsi Chum, and you can see some of the other things. And they do have a ticket booth over there you have to buy your ticket from to get in. All right, guys, that's going to finish up our video over here at Wat Pa Plai Luang. This is unbelievable. I really have enjoyed this. I've been here before, but I've, it's been several years ago, and I was uh, wanting to go over here and take a look at it today. And I've really enjoyed this. Just the... Uh, Thinking of the Buddhist temple with the three Khmer prongs integrated into it, plus all the other styling that you see here, you know, with that uh, mandraba with the uh, four images. It's just really a spectacular sight. And like I said, there's just nobody out here. So you can come over here, you can climb around, you can take pictures, spend as much time as you want. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and stick around and then you're notified when I post a new video. And leave me a comment, tell me what you think. If you know more information about it, let me know and I would appreciate it. So until next time, from over here in Sukhothai at this UNESCO World Heritage Site, remember, life is a journey. Until next time, enjoy. Mm -hmm.